Hello, it's Keith here and this is lesson 17 of the simple series of my ZX programming tutorials. We're going to be taking a look at the Spectrum next this week and we're going to learn how to do simple bitmap sprites on the layer 2 screen in 256 colour mode. This is a simple bitmap screen and we can use this to draw simple graphics just by transferring data from RAM. Um, this was initially done as part of my YQuest series. Um, I was porting my little YQuest game which started on the Amstrad CPC and has been transferred to a lot of other systems and I wanted to transfer it to the Spectrum next and so I needed something to work from. So that's where this came from. Okay, well let's go over to today's code and let's see it in action then. Okay, so here it is. This is the first version. Now in this tutorial series we always do the same thing. We create two versions of the program. The first one just shows an 8x8 graphic which is a smiley face and um, this is actually what we need for the template of um, the YQuest game because that worked in all by 8x8 tiles. So that's the simple version and then we will create a more advanced version which honestly isn't much different really um, in this case for this system um, and this is a 48 by 8 by 48 graphic and that's our Chibico sprite now although the sprite you can see here is just four color this is in 256 color mode it's just a common sprite I use for all of my tutorials so it doesn't really make very good use of the graphics but the theory stands so that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now we're not going to go into the procedures you need to create an actual file and run it on the emulator with that in the Hello World series so I'm hoping you will know how to get something working. We're just going to start from the turning on of the graphics and uh, getting the bitmap to the screen really so that's what we're going to be covering here and I'm going to assume you've really got basically no experience of the Spectrum Next or even really the Spectrum for this example just you understand how to compile a program. So we're going to start pretty much from the basics now the first thing you need to understand about the Spectrum Next is that it's Z80 compatible but they've actually added some extra commands to the Z80 opcode list and it's got these ones for writing data to a Spectrum Next register. These are sort of hardware registers and rather than using an out command they've created these new custom commands that can do this job for us. Now Vasm doesn't support those so what I've done is I've created some macros. Now Next Reg will set a value to a register number within the Spectrum Next hardware and next reg A will use the accumulator to set a value of a specified register number. Now these registers will do a lot of different things and you need to check the Spectrum Next website to see what they do. So that's what we have to deal with when we're setting up the hardware. Now our program code is going to start at 8000 and this is an exact copy of the original Spectrum code I used in my tutorials. So we're just creating a tape in this case and we're loading from tape. The Spectrum Next hardware is an extension of the classic Spectrum. So if you've got classic Spectrum code, it should run just fine. So that's what I'm sort of basing this on here, just a classic Spectrum program. Now we need to start using those next registers pretty quickly. Now the first thing we're doing here is we're selecting the palette that's going to control the layer 2. So we're selecting the first palette here using register 43 in hexadecimal here. So this is the parameter. This is the palette select here. And we're selecting register hexadecimal 43 with this value here. That's selected which palette we're going to use. Now we need to select the palette index. So we're selecting palette index 0 here and we're writing that to register hexadecimal 40 here and that selects the first palette that we're going to define with the next series of commands. Now we're going to be using a single byte per color definition here. We've got a definition called my palette and we write each byte to hexadecimal 41. Now this uses a rather odd layout. It uses two blue bits, three green bits and three red bits. Now there is an alternate format which uses 9 bits, so 2 bytes, but I'm using this simpler one. I felt it was probably going to be adequate for our needs today, so that's what I'm using, just the simpler one here. So that loop will send all of the data and all of the bytes are re written to register 41 here, and they will go to the destination selected with register 40. So that selects our colours. Now we've got our palette set up, we can actually turn the screen on. Now we're actually going to use a real port this time, not, not a next register. We use port 123B here. That will control the layer 2 hardware. It's called layer 2 because it's an overlay to the standard layers. Now what we're doing here is we're selecting that we want the layer to be visible. We want it to be writable. And we're also selecting a bank. Now there's three banks in total. You see the screen is 256 by 192 at 256 color. This is effectively 48 kilobytes. Now 
the way I'm choosing to do it, there are multiple ways of addressing the memory in this, but the best way I think for us to work with it is to use the first 16 kilobytes of the addressable memory. Now on the spectrum, that is always wrong. You see, we can set the hardware up so that any writes to that area will go through the ROM to the video RAM of the layer two, but any reads will continue to come from the ROM. And that's what we're doing here. And so we're splitting the 48K into three 16K chunks. And so when we use this command, we need to specify which of these 16K chunks we want to be able to write to. So we're just leaving it at zero for starters. And we're then just turning it on by writing to that port just there. So that will turn on this new layer two, and it would, in theory, set the first bank for writing, but we're not gonna write at this stage. And then we've got a command here, which we don't really need, but I've just left it in. This is uh, changing the, the CPU mode to the faster mode, 14 megahertz here. Now we can turn that off if we don't need the extra speed, but I thought I'd just leave it in. It was in the previous example and it wasn't doing any harm. Now our initial example is just going to show a simple smiley eight by eight. Now in this mode, 256 colors, each pixel is one of 256 colors and uses a single byte. So each of these pixels is a single byte. It's rather big compared to some of other systems. And you can actually see the round smiley face there. And you can see the mouth here and the eyes just here. So very simple format for us to program in raw hexadecimal here. So that's our bitmap here. And when it comes to actually drawing it, we're going to use a command called get screen pause. That's going to calculate the memory address and it's all going to, so going to handle the paging in for us. Now, our screen is in very simple format, 256 pixels wide, also coincidentally 256 bytes wide, of course. And that means that the L byte of the HL pair will be the X position across the screen. Now, the Y position would be the H byte, but remember the screen is 48 kilobytes in total, but we're splitting it into three chunks. And each of those three chunks will need to be paged in because effectively they're all gonna be accessed from the zero to three triple F range of the addressable range of the Z80. Now, fortunately, it's not actually too hard to do this. So we can take the X position and that will just be the low byte of our pair, which we're using DE in this case. So that's the X position as the low byte. The high byte, we take the low six bits and we store those as the D, that's the DE in destination, and that will be okay. The top two bits we take and we use those as the bank number because remember the 48 kilobytes is being split into three 16 kilobyte chunks and we need to page them in accordingly. So we take those two bits, we all in the two bits to make it visible and writable and we're out to that port again, the same one as we saw at the start here. And that will do our get screen pause and that will take a BCXY coordinate and return a destination in DE. And then what we're doing here is we've used that to select our screen position. We then get our bitmap as the source we are using an LDIR to write eight bytes. We could use LDIs if we preferred or some other command, but we're gonna use LDIR in this case. And once we've done a single line, that's what that will do. We restore DE. So we've moved back to the start like a carriage return on a typewriter. And then we need to calculate the next line below. But depending on our screen position, we may need to do more than just increment D to move down a line. We may need to page in one of those other banks. So our get next line command has a little bit of work to do. So it's incrementing D, which will move the DE down one line, but then it's checking if the bottom six bits are now zero. If they are, then that means we've just gone over one of those boundaries and we need to page in the new bank. And that's what's happening here. So if it's not zero, we're just returning because we, we've correctly calculated the next line. But if it is, if it is zero, we're needing to zero the top byte because we're now at the start of a new bank. And so what we're doing here is we're loading in the current bank settings here. We're adding one to the bank and we're outing it back again. And that will select the new bank and that will allow us to draw in any bank moving down a line. And that will just do that for us. And so that's what we use here. We just repeat until all eight lines are drawn. Now, actually, the advanced version, because of the way this is working, because it's so simple with one byte per pixel, all we need to do is change the BC count to increase our width here. So that this example is 48 bytes wide and we change our height here, 48 bytes. It's really all it takes. So all you need to do is just change the size in lines and pixels for whatever your format is for your size of your sprite. Now, if you want to create a sprite, you're welcome to use my Aqua Sprite Editor. It's free and open source, and it does support the Spectrum Next. If we go to Z80 here, Spec Next, and we do Save 
8 bit per pixel raw bitmap here, that will work just fine. That's what I used to create this example today. That's really all it takes. So there we go. So that's really all of the basics of using the Spectrum Next 256 color screen. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, it took a little bit of um, getting my head around it, but as I say, the one to got commands to work with the banking, it's really very straightforward and the beauty of it is because we're using that low ROM area that was read only anyway and will still read in the same way it used to, we really don't have too many problems with regards to actually working with the Spectrum Next screen. We don't have to worry about any kind of strange paging like we did on the Sam Coupe. So hopefully this will be a nice easy way of getting some graphics to your screen and giving you some nice color. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, I'll be doing more Spectrum next in the future. I've already got a few of the videos as well. And I'm going to be bringing my YQuest game, which is a very simple little game that was based on these tutorials. That's going to be coming out for the Spectrum next very soon. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.